And that was an excellent interview. I loved seeing George Cabrera. What an awesome job. He also informed me that in the new school in Wynwood on 19th and North Miami Avenue, it's going to be also a net office for the police department, giving us extra security for the community. Way to go, George and Aspira of Florida. Now to my next guest. Boy, am I a lucky girl. I've had two handsome men pillars of the community and powerful visionaries. With that said, I'd like to invite a dear friend of mine from a long time ago. We'll talk a little bit about that. Gio Darter, good morning. Good morning, Susanna. Thank you for having me. Oh, I love having you. You know, Gio, you were also a born in Havana, Cuba, raised in Miami. So I know you've also been a testimonial uh, yourself, your own life, of the struggles and growing up in Miami and coming on to where Miami was a place back in the 80s and 70s, really a lot of controversy, a lot of recession, a lot of ghost neighborhoods. And to come out of that, which Miami has always been always a magical place from the Julia Tuttle days all the way through the 70s, to be part of that and see South Beach, which was really your heart and soul for a long time. I mean, just to see, you know, you were, I just want to tell my Art Talk listeners, Geo Darter was, is, or was, and I know he still is because he still looks at model, actor, uh, producer and director to short films, also huge in philanthropy with the Art Deco that you've brought through different Caribbean and as well as South America. Uh, Gio, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I really you, am. I mean, I know you personally from South Beach when I owned uh, South Beach Realty. I had the pleasure to meet you back in 1994. Uh, we started one of the first clubs that we rented space to was Etico Modest. And I know I'm bringing you back in time. And the club was Bash. Okay. It was, yeah, Eric Morris and Sean Penn. Yeah, and right, Sean correct. Penn. Mm -hmm. And it was Bash, and you were promoting, you were, uh, before Tara Solomon, you were, and Louis Canales and you, you were the names to be known, not to reckon with, if you wanted to be in the in chic, trendy <laughs> places of South Beach, <laughs> Gio Darter was the guy you wanted mm -hmm. to know. And so you went through that whole scene of resurgence and promoting the cultural nightlife, bringing all eyes to South Beach because the clubs became phenomenal success. Well, it was also the, the modeling industry also became very, very uh, strong in that area. And the fact is that since I started modeling at an early age and moved to New York at 18, I decided to come back at 21. It was right about that time, and I decided to open up an agency instead of being a model. I wanted to be behind the scenes, and I realized that uh, there was a gap in the Latin market for models. So what I did is I, I started working with Latin America and promoting um, Latin Americans to Latin America to shoot in Latin America. And uh, that's how it began. And of course, from there, you know, South Beach was happening and that was our playground, you know, Susanna. Mm -hmm. And we found this incredible little area with uh, some mystique and at the same time a little bit edgy. And that's when you're young, you kind of enjoy that, you know, and that reminded me of New York. And that's when I lived in New York and I thought this is our little New York. You know, let's make something out of this. And that's where, you know, I met you. And we started with, uh, of course, with the clubs. And, you know, back then, they wanted beautiful people at the clubs. And uh, yeah, so I had the agency. I had the models. And we started going to the clubs. And that brought me into promoting and then dealing with uh, the celebrities. And, of course, you know. Let uh, me tell you, when I wanted to go to a club that you were at, uh, my, short, my skirts got shorter. Uh, <laughs> I had to put a little bit of uh, extra help upstairs and make sure Gio... Uh, recognize me. Well, the but lo you yes. had that stigma. You had that wonderful way of touching things and making it opulent. Really. Well, thank you. Well, I always, I've always loved creativity. I always loved uh, bringing something new to an event or a club. So again, it was free. I mean, to be able to, uh, to imagine something new, bring something new to the table, was always my. So forte. after your successful. Premier modeling agencies like uh, Premier and Jade. You then, in 1999, produced and directed a short film called Escal Escalator. 
the escalator. Like, escalator. Right, the escalator. Here I am trying to do live. Right. No, because right. we were talking about la escalera that. Escalera rodante. In okay. Spanish. Okay. Right. All right. So I'll stick with the escalator. Yes. So you did the escalator. You shot it all in New York City, and that film was nominated in partnership with Free Drug Free America, and that participated in the Palm Springs. Film Festival, and it was you, and was presented into the International Festival of New Latin American Cinema in Havana, Cuba. Well, uh, you know, that's the for me, life is just about waking up and living it. And uh, of course, with the modeling, I uh, went to New York, and then the next thing I wanted to do was again to open up an agency, and from there was to promote my Latin heritage in Latin America. Again, hence the South Beach, the love of architecture and deco. Well, that led me then to uh, uh, create a film based on an experience that I had. I was, of course, part of that nightlife. And you know that nightlife is a, really, a little bit indulgent. Mm -hmm. And I was able to um, um, reassess my life. And part of that was, you know, um, realizing that I had to let go of many um, extra... Um, Activities that that uh, I was in, and I learned uh, to become a. I'll say this: a sober human being. And one of the things that I did was, I created a uh, a story about that lifestyle, and that Amazing. was my my way into this uh, piece that I did. And of course, that that short uh, 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 garnished a, a place in the Drug Free America campaign. Uh, and it was wonderful to do. It was very MTV style at that time, so the youth loved it, and that's what uh, we Which wanted to promote. Which is great. I mean, yeah. I think it's fabulous. I think it also, I think that, you know, your destiny is sort of, it's predetermined. Absolutely. And no matter what <laughs> roads you take, and when you sit and you say, how did I find myself here? Right. You know, I remember I used to come out at 6 in the morning and be a vampire on a day pass <laughs> many times back in the, you know, in the early, late 80s and 90s. Hey, I'm from New York City, too. I made South Beach, New York City. You sure did. But also, <laughs> but also, I have to tell you, you know, you wonder to yourself, okay, why this? What's next? Well, that really paid the future. Without you knowing it, it all comes around in a circle. And you're like, oh my God, this is why that happened to Absolutely. me to bring me here today. Absolutely. Or there yesterday, that brings me now to now. Right. You know, and so with that, you became a member of the Art Deco Society of New York, and then you began to work in the United States and Cuba in 2000, and you organized a group called the Art Deco Collector. It was the first Havana Deco Symposium that you did and conference in 2000. And ever since then, you have been bridging Cuba, the Caribbean, and South America to... Do this gap of cultural and and so the art can leave their borders, yourself. and so the art is only there to be seen and heard. And now you, as a visitor and guest, walk into all these countries and see this huge platform of talent, and you go, "Oh my God, how can I bring and and infuse these bridges of these countries to see and work together and foster creativity?" And guess what was born? The Copper Bridge Foundation. The Copper Bridge Foundation. But let me uh, go back. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, uh, was, uh, again, a gift by doing this film, uh, The Escalator, which was very liberating for me uh, in my life, was that I was uh, invited to the Havana Film Festival. I was born in Havana, Cuba. Yeah. Uh, I, like George earlier, uh, come, you know, my parents are Cuban. I, I was born in Havana, Cuba, and I was raised in this country, and I went through a lot of difficulties, uh, and especially uh, loss of identity, in a sense, mm -hmm. you know. And I um, always wondered what it was like to really be Cuban, because I was a gringo. You know, I was considered a gringo in my school. My brother and I were the only Latinos in school. And I would go home and then speak Spanish to my parents. And they would, of course, do a quince. We'd go to a quince and go, what the hell is a quince? You know, because I was a rocker, you know. So there was this, this kind of um, empty uh, uh, space in my life, and I needed to find out who I was. And after I, of course, you know, became sober and that whole deal, I wanted to know more about Gio and who Gio was. And this opportunity came through this film to go to Cuba 
And um, I went uh, for the first time, and it was very difficult for me to go down there because, of course, my parents, you know, their thought of their son going back to a place that they left was very difficult for them. As a matter of fact, I didn't tell them the first time I went down, you know. Um, but it was a decision that I had to do for my spiritual well-being. And I went down, and when I realized that this country was the most amazing place on the planet. Now I understood what they weren't telling me about. They were telling me they were Cuban, but never got into the, the reason why. Havana is one of the most incredible cities on the planet, bar none. It's like Buenos Aires. It's like Madrid, only 90 miles away from our coast. So when I went there, I saw this architecture, you know, the history. You know, I felt so proud of what my heritage was, regardless of what was happening at the moment politically. But I knew that I came from this incredible history. I wasn't just a, 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 a spick, like they used to call me here, or, you know, a Latino. I was un cubano, you know, with the history of Europe. And then I learned a little bit about that history, and it empowered me. And I saw the incredible people then realized that the people of Cuba weren't my enemy. They weren't my enemy. It wasn't the people. So I put that aside and said, you know what, we need to teach other people like me where they come from. So I wanted to work on this bridge, and I started meeting great artists, uh, musicians, you know. Um, and I heard their personal story, you know. And... I thought that's maybe the way I could help. And of course, I fell in love with architecture. So at the time, my wife, who was the president of the Art Deco Society of New York, said, people have to see this. So I created a trip and a symposium based on this, because I was learning along the way. I said, let me, um, let me introduce this culture and heritage to my fellow friends in the United States, especially Cubans. They need to know where they come from, you know? Yes. And so... We did that, and that led to a second Art Deco World Congress, excuse me, another uh, 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 Cong Art Deco Congress in Cuba, but also in Latin America. I mean, that was uh, my yeah, passion, you uh, did architecture. It in Argentina, Argentina, uh, Brazil, um, you know, correct. Now, Brazil, uh, which I, I hear you started something years ago at the be beaches, a uh, special fair festival that you started, which is a blessing. That's another of, chapter of my Oh heart. my God, but wait a minute. I, I think this is great. And now, because of that event that you did in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, it was like a New Year's. You organized this three-day New Year's and experience our, in honor of the Amaha. here huh? in Miami, uh, when I went to Brazil, I fell in love with Brazil, and I was scared to go, because I knew the minute I arrived there, I would want to stay, and that's what I did. Of course, I fell in love with Rio de Janeiro, and then, of course, I am a, a promoter, producer, right. so I have to continuously have something to do, and I was there for New Year's, and I said, you know, this could be a little better. <laughs> and I noticed that they, there was something lacking because in the past they had a procession of the Yemanja, the goddess of the ocean. Yes. So I went to this community um, outside of Rio de Janeiro that was known for that in the past, and we teamed up together and we brought back that tradition wow. to Rio wow. de Janeiro. So we brought back the, the, the procession. I called a few Hollywood friends. They came in. So we did this huge luau on the beach. And, of course, the press... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's a big to-do. It, well, it became yeah. a big to-do because in Brazil, many people didn't want to acknowledge that they were believers of this... Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, yeah. uh, of this uh, of this religion, which is called Candomblé. But all of a sudden, when you had two or three yeah, celebrities on, on the beach... A lot going on with A this. lot going on with Copper Bridge Foundation. If people wanted to reach out to find out more events and things, I, uh, our talk listeners, South Florida Business Today, you want to follow the events at Copper Bridge. I'm telling Absolutely. you, it, it's a star-studded event, beautiful, Geo, you brought back everything, all your past experiences, the positive ones, you've empowered it in this walk of this, of this life that you're living now.